future 302 tunnel ram nitrous engine build right there making progress more than you think less than i'd hope <laughs> Yep, that's right. Our engine build is actually making some substantial progress. Uh, more than you would think, less than I would hope, as I just literally said two seconds ago. As you can see, we have oil panage, right? We, we got the oil pan. Crank is in it, okay? Windage tray is mocked up. Timing chain is on. Camshaft is in. Timing cover is mocked up. And, uh, well, I'm holding a piston that has freshly gapped rings. Okay, so the rings have been gapped and, uh, uh, well, cleaned up and ready to assemble. So, I mean, they, you know, that, that's some substantial progress, right? Now, the top ring we gapped to 30 thousandths, a tight 30 thousandths ring gap. Okay, second ring I gapped to a loose. 30 thousandths okay just share you know a little bit more than 30 thousandths i did not get very exact this is tight this is loose got it that that's the exactness we got here because it's a nitrous build and we're going to be shooting some nitrous at it these are factory forged uh trw pistons okay so you know we're, we're going to be shooting eh, i mean 150 200 shot at it probably ideal and I did an oil ring modification here. See, right there, those two tabs, I bent them. Now, why did I bend them? I bent them so it lessens the tension on the actual oil ring. Because this is not only a spacer, but that's the expander. So that is pushing these two oil rings into the cylinder wall. Normally, this is under quite a bit of tension. But if you just slightly bend those tabs flat, okay, see, they're, they're bent flat with each other, that lessens the tension, therefore lessening the amount of friction going up and down the rotating assembly of your cylinder wall, right? Or, well, in, in, inside your cylinder, bore. You see, see what I'm saying? So naturally, the next step in this process would be slamming the pistons in and, you know, getting going, right? We're, we're pretty close. I mean, we'll have the whole short block assembled at that point. No, unfortunately, we are still dealing with our cylinder head situation. As you can see, it is now there because, well, I need to talk to you about it, okay? It's, okay, so those heads have 202 intake valves. These are stock pistons with dinky valves, valve reliefs. Let me show you a valve compared to the valve relief. There's the relief and there's the valve. As you can see, we're, you know, we're pushing her, right? I don't know, and I, I actually wholeheartedly believe that these valves will not, you know, be simpatico with this valve relief at all, with this camshaft that we're running which is an Anderson N41, uh, well, roller cam. So before we can start slamming pistons in there, we, we need to figure out our valve relief situation. Now, I originally just wanted to put some iron heads on here instead of these fancy, you know, AFR-165 Renegades with the 202 intake valve, and it's got some porting and whatnot in it as well. Uh, I originally just wanted to build this motor with iron heads, that way it would, uh, you know, work with stock style pistons, and it would give me, you know, a middle motor to where then I could build a nicer motor with nice parts in it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen, because I, I, I have two pairs of iron heads. Machine Shop tells me you can believe the machine shop, I don't know. They tell me one pair is going to be about 800 bucks to get ready for the street. Other pair is going to be 1200 Neither one of which I'm going to be paying for iron cylinder heads. So that's, you know, that's our problem. What's our solution, though? Here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to slam one piston into that 
yeah, uh, block. I'm gonna slam, because obviously I'm holding the valve right now, I'm, I'm gonna slam together one chamber in those cylinder heads. I, I have to come up with, uh, uh, oh, uh, well, I, I got the val uh, valve springs right here. I have to come up with all the geometry and whatnot, uh, measure stuff up. But I, I, I'm gonna get one one cylinder done and ready to go. And of course, then I'm gonna need to figure out push rod length and see if I have any push rods that are close enough. I'm gonna figure stuff out. And eventually we are going to play this piston, run this valve, and we're gonna see what our piston to valve clearance is. Uh, I'm not guessing it's going to be good. I'm, I'm going to guess it's going to hit this eyebrow right, right, right above here. It's because of the larger diameter valve is going to be my guess. But I want to, I, I want an actual, I, I want to know where it is. Okay. If it's close, I mean, if it's something that we can manage, we're just going to, we're going to take a Dremel and we're going to open that up. Uh, to give us clearance. Um, I, I don't I don't want to do that. They have other ones too. The uh, uh, I think Iski sells a uh, a fly cutter that you put inside the head, and then you do it all with the engine assembled and whatnot. I don't want to go that route. It's for one thing the tool's expensive, and uh, you know. For another thing, this this camshaft is supposed to work with stock pistons, if not for the diameter of the valve. So my my guessing is that the actual depth of these eyebrows will be sufficient. It's just a matter of diameter opening up the the circumference, the radius of said valve relief. And if that's all we have to do, then so be it. We'll do the best we can do which oh, well we'll find out um, so that's the plan with that that's that's the hold up at the moment I have to assemble one chamber and uh, and clay it and see where we're at with that because I because I'm just I'm now I can already see it yeah okay you should assemble the entire engine. Each cylinder should be its own thing. You know, you should clay every cylinder and this and yada and this and that and whatever else. I'm doing one cylinder, one chamber, and I am going to make one that works and copy the other seven. That's just what's going on, all right? Sorry. Yeah, it's... I, I am taking the easy way out. Just just do it. Alright. Is that gonna bite me later on? Probably not. But a lot of comments will probably tell me it will. So let those roll in. You know, I never noticed that this valve actually has writing and numbers on it. Was it Rev Rev something? PR two zero five seven. Huh, I wonder what that means. Any hoodles. Um, yeah, that's kind of the update. I I don't really have too much else to say about the subject. Um, well, I, I also noticed this, which isn't the greatest. Uh, probably a whoopsie on my part, but ch check this out. Timing chain cover. Good, good, good. There's a gap. She's warped. That sucks. Can you see the warpage? Kind of, sort of. Not really. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Now you can see it. Yeah, so she's warped a little bit. Um, silicone and uh, bolt. You know, pressing her in will fix that. I'm sure of it. Also, you can see the timing gear. Uh, I have the fuel pump Cetric on there as well and i pressed in a new uh, uh uh seal into the front of 
this time with chain cover. So really, I mean, we're we're nickel and diamond are down to having a an actual engine build here. So yeah. So you know that's the update in a nutshell. Uh, obviously, I have to slam pistons in be and well permanently slam pistons in before I can button up the bottom end. Um, I mean, I. Dude, can I button this up right now? I don't know. I, I gotta do something before I can fully bolt this on there. Uh, you know, just, it's, it's a work in progress, all right? It's a work in progress. I got a lot done, okay? Just, it's moving along faster than it has in the past three years, okay? So, it's starting to look like an engine, right? But anywho, so I gotta get back to work on it. Uh, I, I gotta nail together one a chamber in the cylinder head, and well, I'll catch you next time. And uh, you know, just so you all know, we're flipping pistons on this build, so take that for what it's worth. Mm -hmm.